A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus spoke this parable to his disciples. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went back out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, am I doing you any wrong? Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, today's gospel is one of several parables that Jesus tells about the kingdom. And we learned about the nature of the kingdom because of how the king is described. And here the king is a landowner of a vineyard who goes out to his marketplace early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. Well, he's not satisfied with the numbers. So he goes out again at nine o'clock, and then again at three, and then at the very last hour before the workday is completed. It seems like the landowner is more interested in the workers, concerned about them, than he is about making a profit. And if that's not strange enough, the landowner instructs his foreman at the end of the day to pay everyone the same wage, starting with the last, so that Those who came early can see and witness his generosity. So what's going on here? Well, like all parables, they have multiple levels of interpretation. So on a historical reading, God got involved very early after the fall. So after Adam and Eve got thrown out of the garden because of their sin, God got busy and called Abraham to go and follow him into his vineyard. He promised him a land, promised him blessings, many descendants. And that enticed Abraham to follow. Then he went back out and called Isaac. Then later he called Jacob. And then centuries later, Moses and David and the prophets On and on, he was never satisfied. He always wanted more into his kingdom. But then it becomes very urgent and more intimate because the second person of the Blessed Trinity actually takes on flesh and becomes right into the marketplace. Jesus, in his three years of mission, continually calls the last, the ones that no one wanted. So he goes right into the prostitutes, sinners, tax collectors, the Gentiles, and he has a meal with them. He celebrates with them. He brings them into his kingdom, and they're very glad to come in because they were totally ostracized. So zealous is Jesus to fill his kingdom, even when he's on the cross, at the very last hour of his life, he's still thinking of 
the workers, the laborers. And as soon as he hears the good thief start to repent, he invites him. With his very last breath, he's bringing again someone else into the kingdom. So the first lesson we learn is the outrageous generosity of God. Now, how does this parable apply to us in our day? At least three ways. First of all, most of us are cradle Catholics. We were called very early as infants in our baptism. So we should rejoice that God has called us in that way. And we've been in the vineyard laboring, cooperating with God's grace. And depending on our state in life, our work is different. So if we're married, your labor is for your family, your spouse, you sacrifice, you do all kinds of things. As parents, you labor in love for your children. When you go to work, you make a living so that you can provide for your family. When you unite all of this as an offering to God, it takes on great significance. The marriage, your state in life, your work, all of that is a laboring in the vineyard. And God is pleased with that. And then you continue to give thanks for your early call and all the graces that have been sent your way by coming to Mass, like you're doing tonight. So that's the first way we cooperate. Secondly, we're called now to imitate the landowner and be aware of those who are still idle in the marketplace that have not yet come into the kingdom or the vineyard. And then to befriend them like Jesus did. And to invite them to come to the banquet, in this case the Mass. Walk with them, journey with them. That's the new evangelization. And then thirdly, we rejoice when someone does come in. Even late, even at the last minute, we rejoice. And one of the lessons of this parable is not to be envious when someone comes in right at the last minute and they say they have a deathbed conversion because we know how generous is God. And that's a repeated lesson in the scriptures. For example, the parable of the prodigal son, it was the older brother who refused to come in and celebrate when his younger brother finally came back after his squandering of the inheritance. And again, When James and John try to get the first place that Jesus left and right in the kingdom and the other apostles immediately become angry. They become envious. So again, this lesson has to be retold. Our relationship with God is not calculated. It's not a business transaction. We are in a relationship of love, and so we rejoice at anyone who comes into the kingdom because we know we will spend eternity with them. And that is a beautiful thing. And that's why the angels and saints rejoice in heaven at any conversion. Besides, history is replete with examples that those who came late often have great amounts to contribute. So just take one example, St. Augustine, who was for years way out in the marketplace doing all kinds of things, He had a mother who was laboring in the vineyard, praying for him every day and with tears and fasting. Finally, he comes in. Now, he laments that it took so long because in his confessions he writes, quote, Late have I loved you, O beauty, ever ancient, ever new. Late have I loved you. He's lamenting the fact that it took him so long to get in the kingdom. But once he was there, in the last few years of his life, he was, of course, ordained a bishop, one of the most prodigious saints in the history of the church. And then we have St. Paul in the second reading. He was converted around the year 39 AD. As an adult, after persecuting Christians, he was martyred at 69 AD. So he, he still had 30 years, and he labored and produced a tremendous amount. He was so intimately now passionately in love with God that he was torn between whether he should go and be with the Lord, in other words, be martyred, or stay behind and labor in the kingdom because he knew there were so many still idle in the marketplace. So we hear that second reading where he says, For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. 
If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. I do not know which I prefer. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. And then he says, live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel. This is repeated again and again with the saints. They're so passionately in love with God that they delight in the labor. So I'll just conclude here with one further quote from a saint, Martin of Tours. And he writes this late in his life. So listen to what he has to say. Quote, Hard are the combats we must undergo in our bodies for your service, Lord. And I count enough struggles that I have endured up till now. But should you order me to labor still more in order to guard your camp, I shall not offer as an excuse the exhaustion due to age. I shall devote myself to the task you will urge upon me. I shall serve you under your banners as long as you command it. No doubt an old man would wish for retirement after a life of toil, but the soul is able to conquer the years and will know how not to yield to old age. End of quote. There's an example of someone who loves to labor in the field of the Lord to his dying breath. That's what this parable is about, the generosity of our king, and he wants us to share in that generosity so that his kingdom will be full and filled with delights.